Hi everybody, Wes Olszewski here, Great Lakes Maritime author and historian. And uh, this is my model of the Roger Blau. On February 1st, 2021, there was a fire in the after section of the Roger Blau. And you can learn more about that date and what happened on that date by going to my earlier video, Fire on the Blau, a link of which will be provided in the comments and the description section of this video. This is the NTSB report on the probable cause of that fire. And this video will be about what's in this report. So, stay tuned and go right to the end and you'll find out what the NTSB found for us. In the late summer of 2022, the United States National Transportation Safety Board released its report on the fire damage of the motor vessel Roger Blau. It is very important to keep in mind that the NTSB does not assign blame. They only seek probable cause. This video only reflects their findings. Roger Blau had been in layup status at Bay Shipbuilding's shipyard since July 2020 due to limited contracts resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. On February 1, 2021, at about 1.31 in the morning, local time, a fire started in the engine room. At that time, the monitoring and notification system recorded an alarm indicating that there was smoke in the engine room. In the next minute, the system notified the designated contacts. Shipkeeper number one, who had gone off duty at nine o'clock that same morning and so was not on the vessel, was alerted by cell phone and proceeded to the vessel to investigate. The cell phone of the Roger Blau itself, located in the chief engineer's office, was also alerted. The cell phone at the gate guard's office was also alerted. Shipkeeper number two was not on the list of people to be alerted by the automatic system. About 1.38 that morning, shipkeeper number two woke to the sound of the smoke detector alarm inside his stateroom and discovered his room filled with thick black smoke. Shipkeeper number two then proceeded to the exterior poop deck where he saw the responding shipyard's gate guard. Due to heavy smoke, the shipkeeper, who had no firefighting protection equipment, did not attempt to re-enter the Roger Blau, but instead disembarked the vessel via the gangway. The gate guard, having observed the smoke on board emanating from the aft house of the vessel, contacted the Sturgeon Bay Fire Department. The first units from the fire department arrived at 1.43 in the morning and began fighting the fire, which had started to expand into the galley and poop deck area. Upon assessing the fire, firefighters determined it had traveled through the port and starboard conveyor trunks that angled up to the poop deck to the aft cargo unloading booms and onto the spar deck below, plus throughout the engine room and lower deck. The fire was extinguished later that day at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, nearly 12 hours after it had started. Investigation discovered extensive damage through the engine room spaces as well as to parts of the aft house, self-unloading cargo booms, and the section of the conveyor belt trunks passing through the engine room. Investigators noted that most of the fire damage in the engine room was centrally located on the lower deck near the furnace and on the level above and leading up to the smokestack. In order to prevent piping and equipment in the engine room from freezing during the winter months, the Roger Blau had a diesel oil filtered hot air furnace located on the port side in the forward section of the engine room. On the lower level, there was significant smoke and thermal damage in and around the furnace. A closer examination of the furnace 
showed extensive thermal damage, specifically at the burner enclosure. Investigators found the burner assembly detached from the air tube and resting on the bottom of the burner enclosure. About a month before the fire, the chief engineer thought that the furnace was not operating. He and the second engineer, who was shipkeeper number one, were still working on board the vessel. They noted that the burner was not igniting properly. The chief engineer and the second engineer evaluated the reason why the fuel was not igniting and believed that the igniter was not properly set. Neither of the crewmen was trained on how to troubleshoot problems with this burner, nor did they consult the instruction manual. As part of their attempt to adjust the igniter, they removed and reinstalled the burner several times. Unable to resolve the issue after testing the burner, they contacted the technical representative from the company that installed the furnace. On December 29, 2020, the technical representative repaired the system while on site. Once the issue was corrected, the furnace again began operating properly through the startup procedure. It is possible that the cast aluminum mounting coupling was damaged during the repeated removal and reinstallation of the burner assembly. Another possibility is that the set screw holes may have been fractured if the set screws were over torqued during tightening. Over the next month, these fractures could have expanded as the furnace heated and cooled until they reached the point where the coupling could no longer support the weight of the burner assembly. NTSB concluded that the repeated removal and reinstallation of the burner assembly during the ship's engineer's attempts to repair it without consulting the manual or manufacturer may have damaged that mounting and the coupling, thereby leading to the eventual failure. NTSB also concluded that the furnace's burner assembly became detached from the air tube and fell when the mounting coupling failed, which likely bent and fractured the fuel supply line to the burner, thereby allowing fuel to spray into the operating burner and ignite within the enclosure. When the burner assembly's mounting coupling failed, it initiated a sequence of events resulting in extensive fire that damaged the bulk carrier. Seen here is the NTSB's probable cause statement listed in their report. I urge everyone watching this video to pull up the actual report and read it in its entirety before making comments or before making any judgments on what the cause or who or what may have been responsible. As of this recording of video, there has been no decision as to the fate of the Roger Blau. The damages are considered to be in excess of $100 million. Let's keep in mind that the difference between repair and return to service and scrapping depends largely on the economy. And right now, the economy is in the sewer. Keep your fingers crossed for the Roger Blau.